Hi, Britt Davenport here, and welcome to another episode of On the Vice. Tonight, we're going to be tying a Claca caddis. The first time I ran into this pattern, it was posted in the Loose to Morning Tribune by Leroy Hyatt in his weekly column. Uh, in that, it talked about, he, it was shown to him by someone named Tim Smith, um, that it was from Parks Fly Shop in Gardner, Montana. Uh, it's really just really effective pattern on our local rivers. We've got a lot of caddis, and you could tie it in any number of colors and sizes. So, um, like most patterns we tie, they're pretty versatile in in just changing colors and sizes, and they can match just about anything. So, um, with that, let's get going. Switch to the vise. So that's what it looks like. Pretty basic pattern. So as far as hooks go, we're going to be using the Arex Freshwater 503 in size 12, which is just the dry fly light barbless. And it doesn't have to be a light dry fly hook, but it's just what I happen to have handy. So put that in our vise. Remember, if you're using a Norvice, you want that hook shank to come straight off the top of your jaws. That's what allows it to spin in center. For thread, we're just using Semperfly Classic Wax in A dot. So I'm gonna get that started. I'm just gonna lay down a nice little thread base. Take it all the way back to where that barb would be if there was a barb. For the shuck, you can use Antron, Zelon, anything like that. I'm actually going to be using Dirty Bug Yarn and Caddis Brown. This is one of my favorite materials to play with lately. So when you untwist it, there's actually two strands there. So if you separate those, Sometimes it's easier said than done. Okay, so I've got them separated now. And now this material is not on a strand. There's not like a central core. So what you can do is you can just pull it apart. So it's almost just like bits of dubbing fibers twisted together. And it's got this really nice mottled look to it that I really, really like. So if you do that a few times, and don't be skimpy on the shuck on this one. I'm gonna tie that in. Tie those butt ends down. And we're gonna take it up to about one third of the way from the front. We got to make sure we leave room in the front there for our hackle. Trim off that. And then for the shuck, you want it to be pretty short. A lot of people tend to leave the shucks too long, so you only want it to be about the gape of the hook. For the body, we're just using strong peacock hook. So grab four or five, not too many. This is a smaller fly. Trim those tips off. Go ahead and tie those in all the way to the rear. And then just put a half hitch in there. We're gonna make a little rope out of that. Take your bobbin over to your thread post. Your half hitch doesn't move on you. Try that again. Do it this way. There we go. Take that peacock curl over and just make a little rope out of it. Advance that forward. 
that point where you stopped your trend before. Unwind that peacock curl from your thread and go ahead and just tie it off right there. Trim those butts out. And you can even wrap back onto it just a little bit. So as of right now, super simple chuck peacock curl body. Next, for the wing, we're using Semperfly Predator Fibers in Cream. Uh, you can use poly yarn, pretty much any, anything like that that's going to be kind of crinkly. That crinkle in it is going to A, help hold floatant, and then also it will add buoyancy to the fly. So I just cut a small bit off of that hank. And we're gonna twist it a little bit and then just make a loop and you want it to be pretty wide I don't know if you can see that there and we're gonna tie it flat on the fly not vertical like that we want it flat and you want it to go just a little bit behind the hook shank as far as length Now once you get a couple wraps on there, take your finger and try to spread those fibers out onto the sides of the hook shank. You want it to kind of envelope around it. You don't want it all to be just right on the tip top. And that will help with it floating it. Once you've done that, I like to take a few wraps in front, a couple more over, and then go ahead and trim those butt ends off. Because that's a synthetic fiber, uh, it doesn't really compress too much when you tie it in. So at this point, you can add um, some super glue, or I've got um, like hairline part is whole penetrating head cement. You can add a drop in right there. Just to make sure those don't pull out. Next we'll be tying in our hackle. So for this we're using Coachman Brown. We've got a nice Collins neck here. So you want to match the size of the hook, so I've got one that's the size 12. Go ahead and strip those bottom fibers off to the point where you want to use a tie-in at. And then I like to strip just a little bit past that so I get a nice first strap. And tie that in. If you want, you can use your hair clip to hold it out of the way for a little bit. And then the next up, we are going to dub the thorax. Um, and I'm going to use Semperfly Ice Dubbing. And whoop, so guys, there we go. And I'm using the brown color, so it's this one here at the top. Um, it's really slick, so keep that in mind. Uh, because of that, I'm just gonna use a little bit of dubbing wax helps it hold on to the thread a little bit better. Just going to tease some of that out. We don't need a whole lot of it. And then just dub all the way back to that wing, all the way up to the front. Go ahead and just put a half hitch in there. Take your bobbin over to your thread post, and now it's just time to wrap that hackle. That first wrap I like to take by hand just to make sure it's not going to twist on me or do anything funky. And then from there, 
we can use our rotary feature on our vise to take those wraps. Bring your thread back over, capture that tackle down. And then I prefer to just pull everything back and put that head on right there. Oops, hold on, there we go. And so it kind of dog legs that hackle in there, and so it's not going to pull out. I've got one little hackle. Turn that out. I can go ahead and put a 4 or 5 turn and whip finish on it. Break your thread off because, yeah, that never happens. Let's fix that real quick. I wasn't going to necessarily put head cement in this one, but I think we're best. So, rather than trying to... This is how you can fix it when this happens. Grab it with your hackle pliers. See? Half a time is learning how to fix it when it goes to hell. So, rather than tying more thread in, because then the head's going to be massive on it, we're just going to put some head cement on it at this point and save the day. So I'm using um, just this Solar Lac, it's out of Canada, um, Drum Malloy is marketing it, um, it's quite good and you get a way, way more of it than you do um, similar items. So I am just going to put this on, I'm not even paying attention about whether I get it in the eye of the hook or not. So I just want to make sure I have good coverage on those thread wraps since we, you know, biffed it and broke our thread right at the very end and it come unwound. However, ooh, then I knocked it over, good thing the cap was on. I am going to take the tip of that feather I use and I'm just going to run it through the eye to clean out any that we got in the eye. I'll let that sit for a minute. Let it set up, and then you can just trim that piece of thread out. So that is how you fix a fly when it breaks off at the very end. Normally I would let that sit a little bit longer before I cut it off. And the very last step to this one is we're going to just turn it upside down. And we're just going to give it a little haircut. That way, it's pretty flat on the bottom, and it'll just ride right in the film. So there you have it, a clad guy caddis. Uh, thank you for joining us on another episode of On the Vice, brought to you by Hackles and Hurl Fly Fishing. If you find this content valuable, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate it. Uh, if you want notifications, click that bell. You know how it works. Uh, we plan on putting out at least one video a week, hopefully. Um, and then, as always, we love to hear feedback from you, so drop a comment down below. A few little questions, general comments, or if you want to give us some suggestions on future videos you'd like to see, let us know. Uh, just as a last note, we do provide custom order flies, so if you're interested in getting any of those, drop us a DM, all the way from trout to salt water to full dress salmon flies to fish or put on the wall. So with that, thank you and we'll be seeing ya.